that, that, I'm talking to them. I'll be back with you in just a minute, all right? Uh, just come on up at the end, and we'll get, get going with it, okay? Uh, I want you to turn with me this morning. We're going uh, we're gonna to have a miracle take place. Yep. I did it almost this morning. I almost got it. I gave myself 30 minutes. I'm going to give 35 today because I made 35 yesterday, uh, uh, this morning. And that don't really mean nothing, but I'm going to try, okay? Uh, I'm going to believe for a miracle today because I've got two chapters to read, 20 slides to go through, and a message to do. So I'm going to do it. But listen to me. You've got to listen quick, Okay. Because I ain't going to spend much time. I'm going to be moving real quick. And I want to share with you about a miracle that's happened to us uh, over the past few weeks. And, uh, and uh, so I want you to look at it this morning. We're going to Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1. I, I'm going to read two chapters, 61 and 62. There's only 24 verses, so don't get uptight. 24 verses in both chapters there together. And, but I want you to get it. I don't want you to just let, let him read through it. And I want you to read with me up here. Because I'm reading out of the Message Bible, so it may be a little different than your translation. So let me get it up there, okay? And so I want you to turn with me to Isaiah chapter 61, and then we're going to 62. Isaiah 61, verse 1, okay? This is Jesus' first message. It's found in Luke chapter 4, and verses 7, 18, and 19. This is Jesus' first message, and he reads it from the book of Isaiah, okay? So it's a good message. The Spirit of God, the Master, is on me because God anointed me. He sent me to preach good news to the poor and heal the brokenhearted, announce freedom to all captives, pardon to all prisoners. God sent me to announce the year of his, Dan, you like this, grace. A celebration of God's destruction of our enemies and to comfort all who mourn. To care for the needs of all who mourn in Zion. Give them bouquets of roses instead of ashes. Messages of joy instead of news of doom. A praising heart instead of a languid spirit. Rename them oaks of righteousness planted by God to display His glory. Now listen to me. That's Jesus preaching. Sounds a little different from a religious preaching we see on television a lot of times, don't we? I ain't heard no hellfire damnation. I ain't seen nobody, you know, blowing up anything or anything else, okay? It's just good news. It's not bad news. I tell you, we got good news for you today, okay? So go on, preacher, quit preaching. Uh, Isaiah 61, verse 4. They'll rebuild. Now, I want you to hear this because all this goes together. This is a message. It's a message of restoration. They'll rebuild the old ruins, raise a new city out of the wreckage. They'll start over on the ruined cities and take the rubble left behind and make it new. And you'll hire outsiders to herd your flocks and foreigners to work your fields. But you'll have the title of priest of God, honored as ministers of our God. You'll feast on bounty of nations. You'll bask in their glory. I, let me, I, I am having a hard time not preaching this. You know what? That, there's a day coming and it's right now. When you go down the street and you see all these new cars and all this stuff going down the road and you see fancy suits and all this other stuff and instead of looking in your head and thinking, especially in the city in the western section, that must be a drug dealer. Can I prophesy to you? There's going to be a time coming when you're going to look at them and say, that must be a preacher. All right, y'all just sit there. I'm going to take it, Lord. I don't care whether they get it or not. You're preachers of the Lord. You're supposed to be preachers too. That ought to give you excitement, okay? Because you've got a double dose of trouble and more than your share of con contempt, your inheritance in the land will be doubled. And your joy go on forever. All right, I like that. Because I, God, love fair dealing and hate thievery and crime. I'll pay your wages on time and in full and establish my eternal covenant with you. Come on now. Your descendants will become well-known all, all, all over. Your children in foreign countries will be recognized at once as the people I have blessed. I will sing for joy in God, explode in praise from deep in my soul. He dressed me up in a suit of salvation. He outfitted me in a robe of righteousness. 
as a bridegroom who puts on a tuxedo and a bride a jewel tiara. For as the earth bursts with spring wildflowers and as a garden cascades with blossoms, so the master God brings righteousness into full bloom and puts praise on display before the nations. Isaiah 62 verse 1. Regarding Zion. Hello, Zion. Regarding Zion, I can't keep my mouth shut. Regarding Jerusalem, I can't hold my tongue until her righteousness blazes down like the sun and her salvation flames light, uh, up like a torch. Foreign countries will see your righteousness and world leaders your glory. You'll get a brand new name straight from the mouth of God. You'll be a stunning crown in the palm of God's hand, a jeweled gold cup held high in the hand of your God. No more will anyone call you rejected, and your country will no more be called ruined. You'll be called Hispat, my delight, and your land, Beulah, married. Because God delights in you, and your land will be like a wedding celebration. For as a young man marries his virgin bride, so your builder, listen to it, so your builder marries you. And as a bridegroom is happy in his bride, so your God is happy. Oh, he's mad at you. No, he's happy with you. I posted watchmen. Here's your job. I'm going to give it to you today. I posted watchmen on your walls, Birmingham. Day and night they will keep at it, praying, calling out, reminding God to remember. They are to give him no peace until he does what he said until he makes Birmingham famous as the city of praise. God has taken a solemn oath, an oath he means to keep. Never again will I open your grain field barns to your enemies to loot and to eat. Never again will foreigners drink the wine that you worked so hard to produce. No, the farmers who grew the food, grow the food, will eat the food and praise God for it. And those who make the wine will drink the wine in my holy courtyards. Walk out of the gates. Here's, here's the next thing. God says, I want you to pray for it. And I want you to take action. Walk out of the gates. Get going. Get the road ready for the people. Build the highway. Get at it. Clear the debris. Hoist a high flag, a signal to all the peoples. Yes, God has broadcast to all the world. Tell daughter Zion. Look, your Savior comes ready to do what he said he'd do. Prepared to complete what he promised. Zion will be called new names. Holy people, God redeemed, sought out, city not forsaken. Father, I praise you this morning for the word of God. It will not come back void, but will accomplish all that you've set it out to do. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. I read to you a while ago, all of this is going together, so I just want to get this to you. I read to you a while ago from the book of uh, Acts chapter 17. And in the book of Acts chapter 17 verse 24, the apostle Paul reminds us of something that every one of us need to be reminded for. You're not here by accident. You're here by purpose and design. I have people, I, I tell you what, it frustrates the fire out of me when I talk to Christian people and I say, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Come here and I'll show you. It ain't that you don't know what you're supposed to do. It just you ain't been about doing it yet. And the reason is, is because you don't know who you are. Are you listening? Oh, y'all didn't. Oh, you don't know who you are. The Apostle Paul, I read to him just a minute ago, he saw these people in Athens in the city, and he said to them, he says, God has appointed you in this place at this time to what? To seek after him till you'll find him. You know why you were sent here? That three things. I, this is another message. I can't go there. This is my message too. Okay, three things. Three purposes you're here. First of all, to know God. If you don't know God, you're just walking in the wilderness. You ain't got a clue who you are or where you are. To know God, the second thing is, is to be known by God. You know, God's going to call you up one day, and you're going to say, well, I did this and I did that. And look, he's going to look at some people, and he's going to say, I don't know who you are. Listen, God hadn't called you. Oh, I want to make lots of money, and I want to do this, and I want to do that. I want to ask you something. What does God want you to do? 
The most important thing in your life is not making a lot of money. The most important thing in your life is not having a wonderful uh, mate. The most important thing in your life is not having all these things that you have to have. The most important thing in your life is to be known by God. God, I knew that you knew me. This is what you knew me as. Jeremiah, you're my prophet. I'm sending you the nations. And that's where he went. And can I tell you, that's why we know Jeremiah's name today. Because he completed the work that God gave him to do. And last of all, to make you known in the world. My job is not to have an, I, I, I got to get a reputation. I got to have my ministry. No, you don't. I'm not here to make a name for me. I heard John Wimmer say this one time, and I really I believe that. I, I, want, I want that to be mine too. He I had a, 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 a news person to come up to him and said, you know, you got all these miracles happening and all this going on. What do you re want to be known for later on by another generation? He said, I don't want to be known for nothing. I hope they don't even remember my name. Are you listening to me? I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for him. Oh, i got to have me a reputation. Watch out. When you got to start putting your name on everything, you better watch out because something ain't right somewhere. Listen, I don't have to make a reputation. Does that mean, oh, well, you don't, uh, don't, have, don't look at me. I don't bat. Yes, you matter. The thing is, if I do what God wants me to do, he said, you don't have to worry about your reputation. I'll give you a reputation. Are you listening to me? You're here for divine purpose. Oh, well, I'm not a Christian. I want you to be, you need to be before you leave today. But you still got a divine purpose. Are you listening to me? God never made anything by accident and sent it to this earth. Everything he made was for a purpose. That's not saying you find it and fulfill it, but you were made for it. I want to tell you the happiest you'll ever be in life is finding the purpose of God for which he made you. Where are you going with this? Here's where I'm going with it, okay? I'm going to go to the next slide here. I want to talk to you about the writing on the wall. Something happened a few weeks ago. We had a conference. It was a prayer conference. Imagine that, something great happening at a prayer conference. A prayer conference. People don't even come to prayer conferences. We had about 40-something people there, and we had people there that came for a purpose, and the purpose was to find the strategy of God for this city and for this time, and for the purpose of this church and the churches around us in this western section. That was our strategy that we laid out. And we were asking God for this. We had no idea what he was going to do or what, how he was going to do it. We just, this was a new thing. The, the lady who came and did this strategic prayer conference is what it was called. Was, this is one of the first ones she's done. She done I think she'd one done one or two more uh, before this. But this is the first one that ever worked out like this. And she's writing a book because she's a missionary to Russia and she's going to different places. And she wants to teach them how to take their cities for God. Don't you want to take your city for God? And so we're experimenting, if you will. And lo and behold, God shows up in the experiment. And he shows up in a powerful way. And if you will, he takes his finger and writes on the wall. During this conference, uh, uh, Shar is her name. Uh, Shar Haas. And her and her friend, Jan, came up to help us with the conference and put it together. And she's going through. We had worship and praise. We had teaching. We had sharing time. We had prayer time. We had all those things going through. And that first day, she was teaching about the strategies of taking the city for God and how we had to take every word captive to the obedience of Christ. Not what You know, the devil has a plan for this city, but everybody's trying to learn the devil's plan. I don't care what the devil's plan is. Oh, but we need to know the devil's plan. No, we need to know God's plan. Do you know this city, the first name of the city of Birmingham was not Birmingham? The name of the first city, and I said this a few weeks ago, is Elaton. It, it existed in the western section of Birmingham right over here on, in West End. And it was called Elaton, and it was the seat of Jefferson County government until it was changed to Birmingham and, it, and, and, and the seat. I, I want you to realize right now, Elaton means my God's town. This town from its very conception was to belong to God. And God had a purpose and a plan for the town. And God has a purpose and a plan for you to be here, to be a part of this. 
And, and some of you may be visiting today and said, I'm not a part of this. Right here, you need to find out about your own town and you need to find out what God's doing in it and you need to be a part of it. Because God's doing some mighty things in our day. And so we, we're laying these things out and we get to the last day and Char gets up there and I don't know what she's doing. I don't, we've never done this before. And Char gets up there and she says she wants a uh, whiteboard so she can write stuff on the wall, uh, on the whiteboard. And so we brought her a whiteboard and it was, I'm sorry to say, it's about this big. It wasn't big enough, Okay. And we had all these little writers. She said, I want you to, uh, we're going to worship for a while. And after we get through worshiping, I want you to be listening for God. And when you get through, we're going, I want you to come up here. And I want you to write on this whiteboard. And I want you to write what God says. And we're going to put it together. And that's going to be the strategy that God has given us. And so we got there. And I'm sitting there. And I said, this ain't going to work. This ain't going to work. And something just drops in my spirit. And says, put the whiteboard up. And I did. And give them the pens, put the pens out there, and tell them to write it on the wall. Can I tell you something? We ended up writing it on the wall, and it covered the whole back wall. As people came up one at a time, and something that the Lord had spoken to them, and they wrote it across the wall right there. And then after we got through with that, we started breaking it down in sections. And we got another word that said this. This is what God is birthing in the city, and what God wants to birth through the area around here. And it's going to be a birth. And because it's a birth, it's in trimesters. It's in three uh, separate units. And so so each one of them was divided into three separate units. And those, so those units are the purpose and plan of God. So what I'm giving you today is the first trimester. I ain't telling you to get down to the birth part. Okay? You ought to be happy today. This is the conceiving part. Y'all smile at me a little bit, okay? Help me out some, Okay? We're going to conceive today, and we're going to see them work through the trimesters as the birthing plan comes forth that changes and transforms us and changes to transform the area that we live in. Mighty goals, they're not mine, they're God's. And what happened was we started writing this stuff on the wall. I'm going to show you some things that we've done. Suddenly, uh, we, we took a scripture, Daniel chapter 5, because that's what happened is people started writing. They started writing the purpose of God, of what's in their heart. Suddenly, the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall near the lampstand in the royal palace. And the king watched the hand as it wrote, Daniel chapter 5. Habakkuk chapter 2 says, write the plan down, make it plain so a runner can run with it. So that's what we're going to do. This was the wall. I'm going to put some things together. We kind of had to put some things. I just wanted to give you a, a side of it. This was part of the wall. That's part of the wall. We broke it down into threes We're, and, and put those things together. That's first trimester, second trimester, third trimester. And we got them all up there. This is the year of years. That's what the Lord spoke to us as we were placing this down. This is the year of years. This is what God has called you to do. We need a team to do it. You can't do this by yourself. We have to have a team to put it together. In Birmingham, Alabama, we need a team to put it together. Why? Because the Bible says, unless the Lord builds a house, those that labor, labor at it in vain. Well, I, we just got a plan. We're just going to go with the plan. No. It's God's plan. And can I tell you, revelational plans of God are unfolding. Just like a birth is unfolding. When, when somebody comes in and they smile real big and they tell me, Pastor, I just want you to know the good news. I'm pregnant, and we're going to have a baby. And I look at them and say, well, most of them I look at and say, I don't see nothing. Okay? There ain't nothing there. But let three months go on. Start having a little pooch there. And then three months go on, have a little more pooch there. And then when nine months comes out, my goodness, wow. You can desperately tell there's something going on. That's a revelation. That's a revelation about what's about to happen because that baby's coming. Don't know what they're going to look like yet. Don't know if it's a boy or a girl, but there's a baby on the way. Are you listening to me? That's the way God works. He gives a revelation. He speaks that revelation. And then it starts little. You, first, when you see it, nothing seems to be happening and nothing's going on. But can I tell you, after you get into it a little while, you see a little pooch. And after a little while, you're saying, when in the world is this baby getting out of here? Are you listening to me? That's the way revelation comes from God. A revelation in your own life of who you are and what you are. 
And I've sold this time, time and again before. Can I tell you, this is the last thing on my list to, to pick to become the, uh, to do the rest of my life. I did not want to be a preacher. My wife certainly did not want me to be a preacher. But see, it wasn't for her purpose and it wasn't for my purpose. It was for his purpose. Or listening, if you'll find your purpose, you'll be happy. And you'll find out it's something that you were created to do. Birmingham, Alabama was created for God. It was not created for the devil. And God has us pregnant with purpose to bring forth the purpose of God. But hear this right now in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verses 3. The thing that Dan talked about this morning, we have a mindset that we have to fight against. It's a mindset of enemy. The enemy says of this section in Birmingham, what can come Birmingham? I mean, it's, it's, it's been known for racial division. It's been known for dogs and fights and, and people and uh, violence and uh, you name it. It's been known for that. But God says that's not the purpose for this city. I've raised up this city to be a city of reconciliation. Not of division, but of reconciliation. I've raised it up to show forth the purpose of God in the whole country. Let me tell you, I heard Bill Johnson, I, I, I talk about Bill Johnson. Bill Johnson is a writer, a Christian writer that I read a lot. And he's a pastor and from Redding, California. And he has a, a church that's known worldwide for signs and wonders and miracles. And, God, and, and Bill Johnson, in, in, in two, three, or four, I don't know how many books he's got. But in, in most of his books, he tells about a time that he went to a prayer meeting. He was invited to go to a prayer meeting in another city and God was speaking to him and he went to that prayer meeting and at the prayer meeting he found out something. He, 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 the Lord spoke to him by prophetic word and also by the praying that was going on and the Lord spoke to Bill Johnson and said, Bill Johnson, I'm looking for a city. I'm looking for a city who will totally dedicate itself to God and be known as God's city. And he says, Bill Johnson, when that happens... He said it'll be a domino effect and every city in America will come to the Lord. And Bill Johnson said, Lord, I want that to be my city. Let me tell you something. I'm not fighting with him, but Lord, I want that to be my city. Are you listening to it right now? We can change the very world that we're living in. I don't know if you, are you looking around right now? Listen, I have to get off of it because I'm a political junkie. I ain't going there, okay? Not even going to go there. I, I, we're going to talk about fasting. That's one of the things that God's called me to fast. Are you listening to me? We're political junkies. Can I tell you? I have come to the conclusion, and I'm seeing it right now. Listen, I don't care who's in the White House. It ain't going to change what's happening. The only thing that will change what's happening is when my people, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and turn and seek my face. Then I will hear from heaven, and I'll forgive their sins and cleanse their land. That's a promise from God. That ain't a promise from a politician. Have you noticed they don't keep their promises? But God always keeps His promise. God's laid out for us a strategy. A strategy that He wants us to go for. A strategy that He's opening up. But their mindset's against it. People will say, well, you know, that won't work. We've never done that before. Who do I think I am? I could never do something like that. I could never be somebody like that. Quit saying what you can't be and realize what God says you are. You're kings and priests unto God. You're not, you're not a nothing and a nobody. You're a somebody that He made. He created for a divine purpose to be here at this divine time to do the purpose that God created you to be. Ha. Oh, but you don't know how bad I am. I... I appreciate your testimony this morning. Dan gave testimony of where he came from and what was going on. But you know, we're, we're talking, our, our vision for this church is the prodigal son. And hear this right now, when the prodigal came home, the father, which represents God, never told him one time how bad he was. Never said, you stink and come from a pig pen. He started from the minute he saw him, he kissed him and loved him and said, the boy says, well, just let me be a servant. Let me, let me be one of your hired hands. And daddy says, I'm sorry, that position's already made, taken. Only play, position you got is to be my son. That's what you started out as I don't care what big pen you've been in that's what I called you to be as my son listen the reason you're not where you need to be today is you don't know who you are 
We want to give you your correct image. We want to tell you what God says about you and not what you think about you or other people think about you. God has a purpose. And so as we started writing those things down and we saw the trimesters and how they're going to work out, we we came back and we said, you know, God is setting things in place. And this is the first one. I'm going to give you the first trimester. I'm not going to preach it. All of these will be messages in there. And they'll not only be messages, but they'll also be things to do. We'll go along with it. And I'm going to show you some of those in just a minute. But I want you to know the first thing that God wants to deal with is our heart. I tell you what. We got a whole lot of ministries trying today and a whole lot of politicians trying to get a hold of people's pocketbooks. Preacher, you saying you don't need any money or church don't need any money? Oh, absolutely not. We got a big vision. We got we got a lot more needs right now than we got money, but it's coming. See, money ain't the problem. The heart's a problem. Can I tell you, if God gets your heart, he don't have to worry about your pocketbook. Are you listening to me? I want you to know right now that God, and it's not that, oh, I need to love God more. Can I tell you, you can't do that. That's a law. That's under the law. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. That's the law. But you know what grace says? Grace says, you need to learn how much I love you. And if you ever learn how much God loves you, you can't help but fall in love with Him. And listen, I'm praying for you, not that you just hear it in your head. I want you to experience the love of God. I believe in experiences. I'm talking about the power of the Holy Spirit coming on people, and they don't take, well, I got it in my head now. Jesus died for me. I want to tell you, when the Holy Ghost comes on, you don't have to wonder if Jesus died for you. You know Jesus died for you. And when I have people come and say, well, I'm not sure I'm saved or not. I don't know why that's a problem. Because see, it don't depend on you. I'm not here because Rick decided to get born. My mom and daddy got me here. Are you listening to me? You know how you were born again? You were born again the same way. The Father birthed you. He spoke the Word and the Word became flesh. And it dwelt among us. Why? To see His glory. That's why Jesus is here. That's why you're here. God has a purpose and a plan for your life. And in that, we're going to talk about hunger, heart hunger for God, and how that takes place. How does desire come? I told you one time, y'all, y'all ain't got it yet. Some of you ain't got it. Desire, that same word's called, it, it same word in, in the Greek, it means lust. Now, if you don't know what lust is about, you need to get some hormones. Are you listening to me? That's what's wrong with some people. They ain't got love, love enough to lust after God. Huh. Oh, well, honey, if it's okay. Listen, man, I need some excitement in this thing. God does too. Are you listening to me? God wants a heart hunger. Oh, well, I'm just going to serve Jesus. Oh, I'm going to do the best I can. Don't come like that. Say, God, here I am. Let's go for it. That's that's the hunger that he wants. That's the desire that he wants inside. And you know what? It brings unity of purpose. When Jackie and I started out, we weren't unified in our purpose. I've told this story a lot of times too, so I'm I'm just going to hit the the highlights here. When I got married, I had one thing in mind. Y'all don't believe I was going there, did you? I had one thing in mind. I had married the Playboy Bunny. I was going to get me a boat, and I'm going to have a good time the rest of my life and be gone on weekends. That didn't work out too well. We had to learn to combine along the way, and we had to learn what unity and purpose was all about. And Jackie decided, Jackie decided that the first thing we need was a house. I don't want to, and you're going to build it. I don't build. You will. You know why? Because you're in love and you got desire. Uh, Y'all go to sleep on me. I don't care. I'm going to preach it anyway. (laughs) Unity and purpose. We came into unity and purpose and we started working together. And I want to tell you, we've come a long way, baby. 37 years, I'm 
47 years. My goodness, George, it's been a long time, ain't it? Wow. 47 years we've been together, and she's almost got me straight. It's not quite, but almost. But we're coming to unity and purpose, and we had to come to agreement. That'll never happen. Yes, it will. When we get in the Spirit of God, we start agreeing. Oh, we've got to have every theology just right. Praise God, I'm working with Baptists and Methodists and, and Presbyterians. And I want to tell you something. Their theology is messed up. And you know what they look at me at? Boy, your theology is messed up, Rick. Are you listening to me? But we don't have to come in agreement to theology. What we have to do is come in agreement with the spirits. And we come in the dream of the Spirit, we accept one another where we're at, and we walk in together in love. Boy, that's wonderful. But you know what causes us is there's a block, a heart blockage. It causes, listen to me, every one of us are dealing with some things in our lives. From the very beginning, that's where God starts working on us. There's a blockage there. If you're not as close to God as you want to be, if things is not working out like they're supposed to work out, and things are not going like they're supposed to go, then there's a blockage somewhere. But God, it's not you. Oh, i got to work on that. No, you don't. I, listen, I have a heart doctor. I don't work on blockages. He does. Can I tell you, the Father is the doctor. So you quit trying to work on it. Let him use the Holy Spirit to come in there and divide asunder with the Word of God. And I'm going to tell you, he'll take the offenses out of you. He'll take the sins out of you. He'll take the stuff out of you. And he'll put you a new heart in. It's a heart of flesh. It's soft and tender. We've got to break every chain. If we love God, God does not... Listen to me. Love is not in bondage. Jackie didn't marry me because I beat her. She married me because she loved me. She doesn't stay with me because I threaten her. She stays with me because she loves me. we, we got to get the bondages off of you, and every one of us got different bondages. Some bondages are different than others, but they're all the same bondages that keep us held back from the purpose of God. And Jesus said, I have come, first message I just read up to you, I've come to do what? Set people free. I ain't coming to give you a new religion. I ain't coming to give you a new Ten Commandments. I've come to set you free. And when you love, you set free. Commerce will flow again. You know where you, listen to me, your true job flows from love. God really wants you to love what you do. Are you listening to me? We're praying for commerce in the area. Can I tell you? The government is putting out false stuff. They say if you be happy, just be happy and sit at home and get fat and drink beer and wait for your check to come in the mail. That won't make you happy. You seen anybody like that happy? I ain't never seen nobody like that happy. You know why? Because we were made for a purpose to work. And God's going to show us what our work is. And then we'll enjoy our work. We'll enjoy what God's called you to do. Commerce will flow again. The church will pray for police and government positions. Folks, we live in a world, people think, well, you know, we're free, so we don't. Listen to me. Freedom comes with boundaries that God, not to hold us in, but to protect us. You know, it's a shame that we live in a world. I don't have, I'll get to that one later on when, when we're preaching on that area right there. But hear this right now. What are you teaching your children? Are you teaching them to respect the government and to respect police? Well, they don't deserve it. God never said anything about deserving. He said, give honor where honor is due. And it's due because they are in a position of honor. And listen to me, if we lift them up in prayer, if we minister to them, guess what? They'll minister to us. Last of all, worship. That's our first trimester. All, all these things we're going to be working on. You know where the heart is and where love is? It's in worship. At that prayer conference, it was given that a, a prophetic word was given for this church and for Michael specifically and for your family. And we've been praying, Cecilia is not here this morning, Cecilia Sides and Cecilia Kazai. We've already been praying for Michael and his family. We've been praying for the worship team and their families. We've been praying for that area. You know why? Because when something happens to our heart, it puts a song in there. I 
I don't look at me that way. Can I tell you, love is a heart issue. Love is a heart issue. Are you singing to God? I don't like that singing part. That's what's wrong when you've got a hard heart. Let God soften your heart up because I'm going to tell you, you enjoy love and you enjoy song. Man, the uh, Holy Ghost hit me a while ago and I just cried. And I said, man, I just can't hardly stand this, God. This is so good. I, I'm just enjoying worshiping you and telling you what, how I feel about you and all this other stuff. And it'll change your whole attitude. It'll change who you are. You've got to have a, heart in, a, a song in your heart. And worship is to do that. And prophecy was given that Michael and them would have two worship teams. He'd raise up two worship teams. We'd have two. A spare. Not a spare. I believe one's going some places and the other one's taking her place and another one's going some places and the other one's taking her place. I believe God's doing that right now. And that's what's happening with that whole situation. You know, every time revival happens, I mean major outbreak of revival, there are always songs written to go with it. Yes, Ma Martin Luther, when the Great Reformation came, no, hundreds of songs were written by Martin Luther and those people, and they started singing, and they didn't sing before that, they chanted. But now Martin Luther raises up songs. Why? Because people done got a heart change. Change your heart. John Wesley came, and his, and, and his brother Charles Wesley, and Charles Wesley wrote over 5,000 new hymns and sent them out. Why? Because revival had failed. Why? Because when God gets a hold of your heart, you start singing. The psalmist says, you put a new song in my heart, a song of praise unto God. What was your song when you were dating? Make you want to sing again. Look at you. You ever sing it with your wife? Chantilly lace and a pretty face and a ponytail hanging down. A wiggle and a walk and a giggle and a talk. Oh, babe, you know what I like. Now, that's our song, okay? I don't know what your song is, but get there. You know why? Because God wants to loosen up your heart. What you need is another drink of the Holy Spirit. You don't need to get a, another high on drugs. You need an, another high on liquor. What you need is a drink of the new wine and it'll change your life and you'll start singing again. Oh, I don't have time for depression anymore. Why? Because I'm singing about this new life that I got in Christ Jesus. I got to wind down. got to quit. Okay. I, I'm going to go through all these. I'm not going back the rest of those or other trimesters. And I'll come back to them and I'll get them. I want to go to where I'm going and I'm quitting. Okay, here's it. How are we going to do this? We noticed we took a map out and we covered the whole. We made a circle around the western section. And God told us to start with the arteries of where the communities we were living in right now and where this church is. Start with the arteries and open up the arteries. And God said, I'll, he told me a, 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 a few years ago. He said, you open up the arteries and he says, I'll do the rest of the work. So start with the arteries. And we noticed something. The main arteries run all the way from Minor to McDonald's Chapel. And notice something up there. I can't point to it because my pointer knocks it off. But anyway, it's two hammers. Look at it. These two communities are Minor at the top and McDonald's Chapel at the bottom. And they're made, and they made two hammers. <coughs> God's Word is a hammer. Let the prophet, Jeremiah 23, 28, 29, let the prophet who has a dream recount the dream, but let the one who has my word speak it faithfully. For what has straw to do with grain, declares the Lord, is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. Oh, well, there's a rock-hard thing in front of me and I can't get through. Take the hammer of God's word and keep hacking on it, and I'll tell you, it'll break through. Here we go. Strategies. Here's what I'm going to be giving you from week to week. I'm going to give you a different strategy, a different thing. People say, well, I can't do anything. You can pray. Well, you know, preacher, I'm not too good at that. Let me define it a little different way. Praying is talking to God. If you can't talk, get with Miss Barbara and she'll give you a lesson. I was looking, I was looking for your sister. I don't see her. Is Linda here? I was fixing to say, get with Linda early and she'll teach you how to talk. Are you listening to me? You open your mouth and you start speaking out what's in your heart. That's prayer. And also, define it. 
What, what are you praying about? Oh, we're going to pray for the missionaries. No! If you're driving around in Birmingham, pray for the people on the side of the street over there. If you see a destroyed building, say, Lord, that building's going to be restored in Jesus' name. If you see bad things happening in a place, say, you're not allowed to do that anymore because the righteousness of God is reigning in this city. Can I tell you? That is the power of the spoken word of God. And God says, my word will not come back void, but will accomplish all that I've sent it out to do. Go speak the word over everybody and everything, and you will see a change and a transformation. We researched the scriptures. We researched the minds. How did this place get started? What was this distributed? Known research. Uh, we've already done all the on-site praying and events. That's already started. Here's what we want, we're going to be doing. We're going to be praying uh, on on-site events in the Western Hammer area. We're going to start praying. We've already started that. Praying over the community and have different places, different times. On-site praying and events in Western Hammer uh, in the area around here, prayer walking within the circle. In the circle, we want a prayer walk. We want to pray over every place. We're going to walk and say, that belongs to the Lord. That belongs to the Lord. Lord, you prophesied over this. It's what The business is coming back here. These doors are opening back up. Have you noticed something? They're tearing down the buildings in Inslee. You know why they're tearing them down? Because God's fixing to build some new ones up. Jeremiah was told, hey son, go prophesy over it. And with your word, I'm going to tear it down, destroy it, rip it up and root it out. But then I'm going to allow you with that same word to build and to plant. Start building and planting some, okay? Praying for other churches. Are you listening to me? God has laid it on my heart to pray for other churches. I've been praying for people by name, other churches in the area, in the city. I'm praying for those people right now. I'm praying the pastors. Now listen to me. Now, 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 you got to know I'm, I'm, I got flesh too, okay? There's they some pastors that I don't like too much. You know why? I'm jealous. Are you? No, I don't deal with that. Yes, you do. You know what God do? He, the, the guy that I, 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 I'm jealous over the most, you know what God said? You're going to pray for him until he gets a better success than he's ever had before. I said, yes, sir, I'm on the job right now, and I've been doing that. Are you listening to me? God's going to take those little things out of us, and he's going to show us that when one of us succeeds, we all succeed. See, revival is not going to be when open door has a great ministry and everybody fills a building here. Great revival comes when every church is filled up. Corporate fasting, different ways, different fasting. I'm going to tell you about that when we get there. Corporate worship. We're going to come together and worship together. Pray in the emphasis of the trimester. I'm going to give you something every week. We're going to pray every week at church in this particular area. I'm going to give it to you and put it in your hand so you can put it in your Bible and say, well, I don't know what to pray for. You'll know exactly what to pray for. You have it right there in your Bible, and you can speak it forth, the purpose and the plan of God, and you can have that, and we're going to do that. Prayer emphasis of the, tri uh, the three-month period. It started in February. February, March, April. And then we'll start on the second trimester em emphasis, okay? Small groups and prayer groups directed in the area of word and prayer. Listen to me. This is some place that you can come in right now. I need for people to volunteer their homes once a month for us to meet there. And we're going to discuss what we've been praying and what the word of God is. And we're going to pray over your area, wherever you are all over this city. Wherever you live, we'd like to have as many homes as we could have for people to gather in. They used to, in my day, call cottage prayer meetings. And out of those cottage prayer meetings had people saved and people called into the ministry and lives and changed and transformed. In that section, we want to get to where you live. Last of all, participating in activities that minister in the areas that we are preaching and praying. Listen, folks, it's not only what we say, it's not only what we pray, but it's what we do. I got a part. What's my part? Oh, well, pastor needs to do this, and pastor needs to do that, and Mrs. Cecilia's head of prayer, and she needs to do this. No, it's not about what I need to do. It's about what you need to do. You know what? I'm convinced. I'm, this is it. I'm convinced God wants to restore all things. That's his purpose and his plan. It's not to destroy. It's to build up and to plant. 
And I, I see a time when we don't have to worry about who we're going to get to go out with the children. Because you're going to have children on your heart. Say, God, I, I can't even sleep at night because I'm thinking about my kids. They belong to me. You realize there are people, on, kids on the street right now, they don't even know what a parent is. What if you became the parent? My goodness. There are youth right now that are in rebellion because they've taught, been taught to rebel. But they're going to find a mom and daddy who they love and they won't rebel against. See, God's got a plan for you. God's got a purpose for you. If your family and your lives have been destroyed, can I tell you that's not the purpose of God. His purpose, Jesus said, I've come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. I'm praying and looking for you to have abundant life. You enjoy every child you have, every grandchild, everybody around you. You enjoy the relationships that you have, even the people you work with. You enjoy it. Why? Because that's God's purpose and his plan to restore all things. But Lord, you, but, but, but preacher, you don't know how far I've come and what's going on. You don't know how far he's come. He went up the road to Calvary. So you could have the victory at the cross. That's what he did for you. I want you to stand to your feet. I'm going to be sharing some things with you. I'm going to give you some things. This morning, I, I want you to hear a... Can we do it now? I want, to hear, I want you to hear, just as we go, I want you to hear a story of restoration. A story of restoration. A family restoration. She said, I want to give this testimony. I said, I want you to give the testimony. So you have at it. Tell them what's happened. Tell them what God's done. Is this one on? I got, okay. I'll hold it. You don't, <laughs> these people don't hold these mics good. Go ahead. Um, I nervous wreck right now. <laughs> I wasn't uh, expecting it to happen. This it's year. not on yet. This is Alyssa. My oldest child. There it is. <laughs> this is Alyssa. She's my oldest. She's going to be 11 in How July. Pretty. And a lot of you guys know some of my testimony, but don't know all of it. March the 10th. I will have had the pleasure of being married to the most wonderful man I have ever met in my life. Boy, that's points. Keep preaching. <laughs> that man changed our world. His family accepted me and my two little ones that I already had. James is four. He's not with us today. He's with his father for his weekend visit. We were blessed with another little one, Mason Gray, that was born on December 27th, 22nd. <laughs> <laughs> my testimony comes from years of hurt and a lot of bad decisions that I had made. I'm so ashamed of the woman that I used to be, but so proud of where he has brought me. Yes, that's where we're at. I lost custody of Alyssa and James. Back in uh, February, I believe, of last year, January 27th, he restored them back with us. So we received them back, and now we have custody again. The fight's not over. <laughs> April, we have another court hearing, but we have it in two different courts. One is because James Ethan's father wants custody of him. So please, please be praying for us. We know that God is going to rule in the favor of of um, what he sees best. And we're so thankful for all of you guys. <laughs> so thankful because we wouldn't have made it this far without y'all. I want you to put out your hand. Father, we thank you, Lord, for testimony. Hey, that's a money that we give and test over. Father, we got through it. And Father, we not only got through it, but Father, you restored what was taken. And, Lord, we praise you for that right now, and we thank you, Lord, for continued restoration. 
Lord, that everything the enemy has stolen will be brought back. Father, that these two together, mother and father, will stand together and give testimony of the grace of God. And if God can do it for us, he can do it for you. Lord, we release that right now, and we release the divine favor of God on every decision and everything that's made. And I praise you, Lord, for what you've already done and what you're continuing to do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you very much. Praise God. Give God a hand clap. That's good. You know what? God can do it for them. He can do it for you. It's not over. Till the fat lady sings. No, it's not over till Jesus has the last word. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we just release that, the grace of God. And Father, I, I thank you, Lord, for everyone that's here this morning. And if there's anybody that doesn't know you, the Bible says that all we have to do is not go home and get our house straightened out and get things done and do this and do that. It says all that believe in their heart that Jesus died on the cross for them and confess with their mouth that Jesus is their Lord, will be saved. And so, Father, this morning, I thank you, Lord, that there are people here that are hearing the gospel, the good news for the first time, that he that knew no sin became sin for them, that they might be made the righteousness of God in him, not in themselves, but in him. Lord, I don't want what I did. I want what you did. And Father, I thank you because of the cross I can receive that, and they can. And Lord, I ask right now that you'll put it in their heart to say, Lord Jesus, I receive your free gift of grace, and I receive it by faith. And Lord, as they do that, it'll change your lives. And Father, as we walk through these next nine months, Father, we're going to see the goodness and the greatness of God like we've never seen it before. And we will see a transformation in our lives but not only our lives, but the life of this city. Birmingham, Alabama, Western Section, you belong to Jesus. He claimed you long time ago. He has ordained this city to be my God city. And Lord, we release that and thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you.